introduce our esteemed professor, Dr. Safaraz Masood, is an assistant associate professor at Department of Computer Engineering in Faculty of and of Changing and Technology in Jamia Milia Islami. He published approx 30 international journals, attended many international conferences. This chapter is also mentioned in some books named Approaches of AI in Healthcare and some other books. Without any wasting our time, uh, just over to Sir Faraz Sir. Just I want to say one thing more. Yeah, because a few days ago, I attended Sir's a seminar. There were three or four professors, the panelists, the IITs, the professors. One of the best. I would say that Sir Faraz Sir was very insightful, very informative, and Sir was very passionate about the web and the web and the web. और वो उनके हाथ में फ्रैक्चर हो रखा है लेकिन बावजूद इसके वो ड्राइव करके आने के लिए रेडी थे बट हम ही लोगों ने इंसिस्ट किया नहीं सर आप वेबिनार ले सकते हैं तो विदाउट एनी वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम ओवर टू सरफ्रास थैंक यू दानिश फॉर हैविंग मी वंस अगेन एट योर एस्टीम इंस्टीट्यूशन इट्स क्वाइट लेट आई नो बट I'm really thankful to the audience for for being here. Or your uh, invitation to department side of Sir Akopeh, uh, AMU, when he call, Sir, we have a very close connection with Sufyan Sir. So we cannot do it. So it is really again uh, thankful. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really grateful and thankful to you people for inviting me once again. And uh, me also, without wasting uh, more of a time. I'll start my discussion. Uh, this is about uh, AI for a greener tomorrow, as uh, Danish gave me a theme for this uh, discussion today. Let me just share my screen and please let me know if it's uh, visible. Share the entire screen for you people. Let me know if it's uh, if it's visible. And I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clearly visible. Oh, thank you. Right. So as we know that this is uh, an, uh, kind of an online session. So if a beach may network is connected or if I have some power issues, then please uh, be there. I'm on my lap. Up, so I should be able to have my power and if my network goes down I'll try to connect to my mobile phone so kindly stay there uh, okay so again a couple of buzz buzzwords uh, being added in today's discussion AI we all are quite aware it's all around us it's a new tech buzz uh, green uh, computing and greener solutions and a sustainable solution are actually what we are looking for uh, because uh, if if we keep on moving towards this kind of a uh, uh, technological advancement, which does not talk about uh, sustainability, which do, does not uh, include other beings, uh, and this is only about human development, then this might not be the right direction, uh, as it has been laid down in various uh, uh, definitions and discussions, which we'll see today. So for my today's discussion, uh, this will be around uh, some sort of an introduction to sustainable developments, as it has been described by uh, the United Nations, uh, AI and its broader applications along with uh, in what aspects AI is helping in uh, realizing those uh, sustainable development goals. We'll try to see that quickly. Uh, specific applications of uh, DL models in sync with those SDGs. And I'll also try and discuss about my area of uh, uh, research interest in deep neural networks. We'll also try and see if we can build some deep neural networks using teachable machines and uh, I don't think I will be having time for low. Uh, we will see if, if we can uh, get through that. Uh, I have a couple of applications bundled today, which I'll be discussing. Uh, green area detection problem. It's again a vision-based problem that I plan to discuss with you. Other problem that I plan to discuss with you people is uh, waste segregation problem. And another um, uh, kind of uh, aim that I am having today to discuss is detection of bird species. So as we all know, it's not just about human development. We can use technology. We will be using technology for detecting uh, 
uh, wildlife or wildlife preservation also and birds are a part of that domain so we can i mean these applications i'm just i'll be discussing so that we can get an idea about it and we can extrapolate them for uh, other applications as well so three applications i'm planning to discuss with you people to get an idea of it so we'll begin with sustainability and i'll take it down from the uh, well known definitions it's a social goal actually where people are planning we humans are planning to coexist on earth and i had uh, discussed this earlier as well in my previous session and i'll repeat that it's all about coexistingly living in harmony with other beings it's not just me and myself i me and myself it's actually uh, beyond that boundary and every 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 living species on this planet earth is a part of that uh, are all, are actually on the verge of it and and people are uh, alerting us i i was going through uh, kind of uh, a small report today where uh, these fireflies which we used to see quite a lot even in and around our campus jugnu they've got absolutely extinct we don't find them anymore otherwise it was just like 15 years ago we used to have a uh, lot of those uh, coming up here and uh, there in within the campus itself but absolutely gone even though the campus is still green but there are some other uh, some other aspects which are affecting their habitat and their lives i mean their lives because of which they are getting uh, extinct so these species are still there in india in some parts in, in plenty but most of the parts they are actually uh, getting wiped off and uh, uh, people have uh, put up research papers and articles highlighting the impact of honey bees and they're saying that the human lives are closely bonded to human to honey bees and if they are on the verge of extinction it will be a bad bad day for them so ultimately these things are going to come back to us if we are just thinking about our own selves in development uh, our own uh, uh, what do you say materialistic needs are getting fulfilled by these developments and on the cost at the cost of these uh, these beautiful creations they are they are getting affected then this effect is not actually going to be on them it's going to come back to us so be it in terms of disturb uh, you say rainfall patterns or disturb your heat patterns we all know the average temperature is going up each uh, decade and uh, it's almost like 1 per 1 degree per decade it's it's, it's getting affected that's a lot a lot of uh, glaciers are getting melting are actually melting away which are going to affect the habitat of not just humans but these animals and these wildlife as well britlen in the report uh, 1987 Uh, define sustainable development as the human development that meets the need of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs so definitely we want comfort for our own self we want growth for our own selves but this growth this comfort this expansion should not be as such that even our own uh, future generations are going to compromise on a lot of things so we don't want them to compromise my daughter my my son i don't want their life to become compromising on 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 uh, these aspects so just the way i'm thinking about my future generations i need to think about others as well because we are living in uh, a kind of a socially connected and an ecologically connected world uh, we humans and animals and even plants we're all connected we can't say that we are living in isolation so these sustainability aspects they have been uh, quantified into 17 goals okay so these goals they they relate to some social aspects some of these goals they relate to economical aspects and some of these goals they are actually related to those developmental aspects so the first you can see the goal over here is about poverty the second one is hunger health education gender equality uh, water sanitation affordable and clean energy you can see development and growth factor number 8 Uh, are there any uh, messages? Because I'm on on this window, I can't see if there are any chat messages or anything. Okay, Danish, I would I would request you to uh, help me with that. If you have any uh, any message or or any uh, question or query, then you can uh, let me know. Because I can't see that page at this point. Okay, yes, sir. So you can see it's 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 from a wide spectrum, a spectrum of economical, social, and development needs. So you can see. 
uh, aspects of not just life on land, life below uh, water, that means life under land, life over land, in the air, all of those aspects are covered. Social aspects are covered, climate aspects are covered, energy aspects are getting covered in this. These 17 goals have those sub goals and I've made a list of those. And you can see these uh, sub aspects, they total up to about like 169 actions that we are planning to have under these 17. And thankfully, our artificial intelligence has uh, a lot of uh, scope of getting applied in most of these areas so in some way maybe directly maybe in some of the cases indirectly this can come to a lot of help in realizing these 17 goals just to highlight which i which i tried in my other session also to tell you that these these aspects which i have mentioned over here they have uh, some really uh, i mean these are not just on on philosophical terms but these have something really of our connect so you can see this sustainable development goal sdg 3.3 that means uh, a subcategory three under three is about communicable diseases and we know these, these i mean recently we have been through covid era and uh, we found a lot of those research articles and research is coming up where people were building ai solutions for prediction of uh, how long this uh, this COVID era is going to be, people were having those machine learning and AI solutions. They were trying to detect COVID uh, based upon some input. Maybe that was that input was uh, as simple as an X-ray or as complex as a coughing sound. People are even trying to distinguish between. They tried and their work are still going on to distinguish between a COVID cough sound and a non-COVID viral infection cough sound. So people are trying to, uh, are actually applying uh, AI-based solutions in trend predictions, in disease predictions, and, and many other things. People are also trying to uh, work upon uh, detection of those impacts of these kind of uh, diseases over the psychological health of people. Then you can see there are other uh, sub actions also maybe like sus substance uh, abuse uh, road traffic injuries it's it's another uh, sub sub goal 3.6 we want to uh, try to remove or or reduce that with the help of uh, technology or or whatever means and technology we know it's going to be helpful quite a lot uh, we can have other aspects also mortality from environmental pollution so environmental pollution you can see it's also another area of high concern as a sustainable development goal uh, development assistance in vaccines and coverage malnutrition drinking water clean cities a lot of uh, areas so as i as, as i pointed out over here 169 actions or sub goals have been highlighted and uh, you can see a lot of scope of ai getting implemented so we know that AI is a very big umbrella. It's a very, very big umbrella. And within that, we have uh, uh, subsections of sub or some of sub umbrellas of machine learning, uh, NLP, that is natural language processing, speech recognition aspects. We've got expert system building setups, planning, robotics, vision. These are many other, uh, yeah, I mean, those many other uh, branches under which we can uh, study or apply uh, AI. The one that seems more uh, intuitive these days and, and highly popular and highly buzzing words, machine learning, deep learning. We have been using uh, machine learning. It's, it's actually teaching the machine to do certain things. Uh, it's, it's actually telling the machine to, to, to take decisions and uh, human-like decisions. Now, these uh, human-like decisions can be made uh, only when we teach the machine in a, in a way similar to how humans have learned. So we're trying to imitate and make the machines learn the way uh, we humans have learned. So there are three ways people have identified how a machine can be learn, can be made to learn. Uh, it's uh, a supervised way of teaching the machine, that's supervised learning. An unsupervised way of teaching the machine, that's unsupervised learning. And the third way is the reinforcement learning. So if the if the machine is being taught under the guidance of some examples right this is the way to to, to do this thing and this is the way not to do this thing so crisp ways are, are being taught crisp examples are being given 
that 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5. So these kind of inputs and outputs mapping patterns are given. Uh, then this kind of a learning or making the machine to learn is called a supervised way of uh, learning. It's, it's a very, very popular way these days, uh, but it heavily depends upon the data set. You must have, for a particular problem, you must have the corresponding data set where a sample has a very clear-cut mapping to its corresponding target. As I gave you an example, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, and those kind of examples. So this is a problem of addition. Similarly, I can have another problem where I, I tell my machine this is a smartphone, so this way is also a smartphone, this way is also a smartphone, this way is also a smartphone, so any either of the way it's a smartphone. So I'm telling the input and I'm telling the target label, smartphone. And then I can say maybe this is a watch. So I'm giving you the input and I'm telling you the output also. Possible output. What I want from the machine is to understand or realize a way of mapping. So the moment I show you this, the machine should have a way where it maps this input to the target. The other way of matching the machine is an unsupervised learning method. You must be aware, but for a few who might be new to this era, I'll just pay a minute to it. Unsupervised learning, as the name suggests, you are not given the supervision of a teacher, of a, of a guide. Supervised learning has an advantage of the fact that you know the target. Like I, I, this is a smartphone, so I know the target. This is a smartphone. So if I say no, this is not a smartphone. This is a watch, or let's say this is a mouse. I say this is a mouse. So I'm making an error, and I can evaluate the difference between the target that was expected and the target that I've or that I've observed. So I can I can evaluate a difference. I can calculate. I can I can magnify the error. Uh, I can actually calculate the error. So that error becomes the guiding factor for the machine to learn. Okay. So this time I made an error. That time I did not make an error. So error is equal to one. Error is equal to zero. That's how the machine learns. So, but in case of unsupervised learning, the machine does not have a target. It only has a data. So in that case, because the machine does not have the target, uh, it tries to find out some intrinsic properties of the data itself. For example, uh, maybe this is something black and silverish in nature, and this is something uh, pink and slightly silverish in nature. If I keep these three things, maybe, I hope you can see this. So intrinsically i'm not telling any labels i'm not giving this a label i'm not giving this a label but intrinsically there is some similarity between these two inputs so my machine somehow tries to find out similarity between inputs so this this sample is not similar to this one but this sample is similar to this one in terms of its shape most probably uh, not in terms of its texture maybe most probably it's in its shape so it has kind of a mouth kind of structure so Somehow the machine will find out similarity between these inputs and will try to put them together. So this segregation, this grouping of the data, the machine has learned by the help of understanding similarities between inputs. So unsupervised learning in case may we don't provide targets, we expect the machine to learn the intrinsic properties of the data. So try to learn how to find out the intrinsic properties of the data and based upon that, do the grouping, do the classification. That we would we normally call it uh, a clustering uh, kind of a grouping problem, as you can see over here. Clustering is being done. So the difference between supervised and unsupervised target. targets are known in supervised. That's how we find out the error, and we try to update the machine with that. And in unsupervised case, we don't have the targets. We just try to find out the similarity between the inputs and try to the, uh, the similarity between the data. The third one is the reinforcement learning, and in case of reinforcement learning, the situation is slightly different. Uh, here we don't have legacy data, and we want uh, primarily we don't have the legacy data. And uh, on the basis of the current input itself, I want my machine to learn. So this learning is most is mostly in terms of something called a reward and a punishment scenario. I, I gave this example earlier also, I'll try to be because this is a classical way of understanding this. I have, I just got a new game, 
right? So my mobile phone is company just made into the game. I am just playing that game. And my player is is walking, it's live, and by some sort of a move, the player jumps into a pit and dies. And I have to begin from the from, from the initial point itself. So that is a punishment for me. Starting from the initial point itself is a punishment for me. So that punishment is something uh, not good for me. So I realized, okay, if I if, if I somehow miss this thing, I don't get punished. And if I let's let's take example of the Mario game, you take you take that power, you grow in size, and that's a positive thing. Maybe you start firing, but if you fall into a pit, the, the player dies, and you have to start from the beginning. So that's a punishment. So even a small child, when we were quite young, we did not have like that. We did not have YouTube videos so that we could learn how to play this game. So we used to learn by playing. So each sample was for us to learn. And, uh, by the help of reward and punishment, reward and punishment, some way or the other, we were learning. And after some amount of uh, learning uh, iterations, we at the something similar. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we, we can extrapolate this knowledge to uh, a real world scenario for today. Somebody comes up to a shopping online store, and uh, this is for the first time the person is shopping. Let's say a person, a new person, has made his or her account on Flipkart or Amazon, and. Uh, Amazon and Flipkart will not be knowing any behavior or pattern of this customer. So as the customer starts buying and visiting the website, they will get to know about the, if the person buys, it's a reward. If the person selects, maybe puts in the card and then uh, does not buy, does not purchase, that's a punishment. So on the basis of each move of this new user, the, the system will realize uh, what kind of uh, behavior this this uh, human is going to have? So I'm not having any legacy data. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a new joining to this website. I'm not having a, a legacy data. So if I don't have a legacy data, and on my current inputs, I'm trying to uh, realize some sort of uh, learning I'm trying to make. So this kind of a learning is called a reinforcement learning for real time decision. You can see the application real time decisions, game AI, learning uh, some new kind of task, robotic navigations skill acquisitions these are classical applications of reinforcement learning as far as supervised learning, learning is concerned we primarily have two ways of implementing it we can have a regression problem for it we can have a classification problem for it weather forecasting salary predictions process optimization some new insight developments maybe some trend line prediction is a regression problem uh, however for classification we have got some diagnostics or uh, customer retention classification image classification fraud detection they all come under the uh, supervised classification problems so our sdgs right depending upon the type of data all these things are decided by the data if i have a data in which i have targets i'll apply supervised learning if i have data in which i don't have the targets i'll apply unsupervised learning and if i don't have the data itself I, I'll, I'll start building my data and I'll, I'll learn on the fly on the go then it is reinforcement learning so mera jo bhi sdg mein jis pe main kaam karna cha raha hu i'll have to see what kind of data it provides me and then i'll choose the appropriate type of learning that i'll apply broadly these days ai is being applied to robotics self driving cars healthcare financial applications customer electronics voice assistant etc etc so the list does not end these days okay the biggest buzzword these days are computer vision machine learning generative ai etc et so i just skip that part and i'll come to my sdgs and how we can achieve something like a greener tomorrow with the help of this so i'll just quickly go through these aspects uh, this is a kind of an introduction to uh, how ai is getting applied so uh, people are building models for uh, economic uh, understandings we have uh, trend prediction models these days where the economy of this country is going to go we have ai models for that we can build those quite easily we can map forward poverty also based upon certain parameters if we have the right parameters uh, samples uh, from the government we can predict the, the poverty direction which uh, these days most of the uh, uh, countries and most of the governments are applying to future print those samples right zero hunger that means we are talking about crops so uh, agricultural maintenance and agricultural uh, monitoring and surveillance is a buzz these days a lot of research is is being done for, for uh, 
can say uh, crop yield prediction and uh, those uh, kind of area prediction what can I mean, uh, we can have a drone we, i mean getting a drone is is quite uh, easy these days so we can use a drone to collect those uh, uh, overview images and I, if, if let's have a very big field by just by staying at my at, at my farm uh, i just have a drone that can visualize my my crops from uh, my hovering top let's say 20 meters above 30 meters above and it can take a video and then i can just simply put that video into a mobile phone that has a, a kind of pre-trained model which can assist me in uh, predicting if there are some issues with the crops uh, if, if some crops are drying or dying out uh, or some sort of infestation is happening those kind of detections at large scale at large scale and continuous those these kind of dry works can be done quite easily by these uh, uh, ai based automatic water uh, supply provisioning all those things are, are getting done by by these uh, ai and iot combined good good health and well-being People are using AI and deep learning and ML models for health prediction, disease prediction, prevention, discovering new medicines and new treatment plans. Uh, even for diseases where we don't have a prospective uh, prognosis or, or, or very well laid treatment, uh, maintenance can be done. So early detections are being done on the basis of some very minimal parameters and very innovative solutions are actually coming up. For education, we are actually using this platform. Uh, technology is actually helping us quite a lot. People are using uh, computer vision as well as other aspects for which are which are helping them to learn. Uh, sources like Kaggle, sources like uh, Coursera, uh, sources like even YouTube is is a very good uh, education medium these days. But one can't deny. And there also, they are actually trying to see your past history, and on that basis, they try to suggest you the best possible next uh, course, next yeah, video, yeah. next yeah, 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 yeah. Last minute yeah. yeah. so Those kind of analysis are, are personalized uh, treatments and personalized learning uh, solutions are being provided through AI solutions on, on these fronts as well. Gender equality, yes, we can have it. We can have uh, solutions for that also. Uh, Detection of uh, uh, correct. I mean, I mean those water issues. If it's right, if it's not right. Uh, prediction of rain, prediction of uh, floods. All these things are are getting done. So all those uh, inhuman and dull jobs, which were considered to be quite dull and da dangerous, uh, those are getting done by the help of technology, by the help of uh, AI. Robotic assistance, not just for our leisure, not just for our uh, for our assistance, but also for uh, helping the, those physically challenged and elderly are uh, being heavily used and are getting a lot of attraction from researchers. We are also now monitoring climate change, consumption uh, behavior of population, and, and optimizing those uh, production levels. Uh, we're talking about asset management and uh, resource management within, management within communities uh, so that overall environmental improvements can happen so at all these aspects uh, machine learning or ai is actually getting applied marine life detection underwater exploration uh, we uh, we already have uh, uh, i mean we, we can we can collect videos long-term videos we can just pour i mean put down a camera uh, through a board uh, in, the, in our seas and oceans, capture the, 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 the video samples from there and they can bring those samples outside into our labs and then just process those samples with the help of an AI based solution and whatever kind of analysis we want. If we train the model right, we can expect solutions from, from them. So we don't need to uh, send in a human as we are, uh, I mean, we, we do find some odd situations down there. So we can avoid those things and uh, kind of uh, a regressive task can be done by these non-human solutions, by these AI based solutions. Life on land can be, uh, can also be assisted, monitoring, surveillance, a lot of these things are, are possible. Species, health, land use, change, uh, 
uh, earlier this land was an agricultural land now it's getting changed to something else this was greener land last time now it's changed to something else uh, so these kind of monitoring things can be done let's use a drone capture the videos and put that into a server or uh, and put that into a workstation which has a pre trained model for that work and it can do your task work easily so no need to hand on this task to a person who will just sit on the system and just keep on a uh, visually i mean visually analyzing that, that uh, long video किसी आदमी को बोले साहब पूरी वीडियो चेक करो तो बारह घंटा आप पंद्रह घंटा आप यूटिलाइज करेंगे सो वी कैन अवॉइड दैट थिंग वी कैन अवॉइड दोज लॉन्ग वी कैन मेक दैट पर्सन सब फिर मच बेटर एन इफ हैंड ओवर दिस टास्क एन आई बी सोल्यूशन प्रिडिक्टिंग पॉपुलेशन ट्रेंड्स डिसर्टिफिकेशन ट्रेंड्स एपिडेमिक ट्रेंड्स ऑल कैन बी डन विद दी हेल्प ऑफ दिस ए आई बी सोल्यूशन सो लार्जली वी कैन सी मॉनिटरिंग सर्वेलेंस प्रिडिक्शन दीज टास्क एंड दीज एस्पेक्ट्स कैन बी डन क्वाइट इजिली विद हेल्प ऑफ दीज ए आई बी सोल्यूशंस and where are we uh, i mean where, where, where are we having the benefit these human uh, workforce that would have been utilized on these kind of tasks can be now shifted to some other important uh, aspects of uh, of those tasks i mean to my area of uh, uh, research interest deep learning models which include it includes like uh, a list of those uh, models Uh, fully uh, neural networks convolutional neural networks gan auto encoders dbn and rnns uh, this lecture is more about the application part to uh, greener uh, tomorrow so i'll just stick to one of those uh, aspects i'll i'll stick to see in part in this discussion so convolutional neural networks are specialized networks that perform two different tasks the first as the first component of the cnn it performs as a feature factor and the second component of the convolutional neural network it acts like a classifier uh, it's like it's a conventional classifier so my images can be given to a convolutional neural network uh, which extracts the features out of it and then these features are given as a list to these classifiers and the classifier can classify them to not calling texting or talking to these is actually taken from uh, a paper which i have mentioned over here on the left hand side so these people they collected a data set again this was this data set was uh, collected with the help of a drone that they flew at a, at a height of uh, 30 meters and uh, they collected over like uh, 1 lakh images but they uh, did public i mean this is an open source paper i can give you the link you can find this paper also and then they put up uh, a data set of uh, about 9000 tag images which went up to the build up process and in this data set they actually uh, try to find out areas where you have vegetation or dry vegetation or some hill contaminated with vegetation or no vegetation whatsoever then they had some other categories also healthy vegetation but it is contaminated you have you can see waste वगैरह पड़ा पूरा पड़ा है dry vegetation again with some contamination uh, unhealthy vegetation that is uh, having some contamination and no vegetation it's just pura contamination waste is escaped over here this was the distribution of the sample that they collected obviously they found a lot of samples for uh, vegetation for dry vegetation and for no vegetation so unfortunately they could not find many samples for uh, those contaminated vegetation or contaminated vegetation the number of samples were quite less these results they translated to the performance of the model uh, even their model was uh, not doing good for these uh, less number of sample classes they build up a very simple convolutional neural network it's a, it's a, it's a simple architecture this is the description of their architecture uh, where you can see it's a convolutional neural network has some convolutional and two pooling layers one two three four five convolutional layers and some five pooling layers it has uh, a simple architecture which ultimately flattens the parameters extracted by the first set of layers and then it had uh, a multi layer perceptron a classifier uh, which had a dense layer of networks uh, layers through which the classification was performed so these inputs passed through the first se segment and then it got transformed into a set of features which was classified into those eight classes which this data set was. the results if i discuss with you uh, you can see uh, the vegetation samples were, were quite a lot uh, 
So obviously the performance, if I, if I see over here the performance, 94% accuracy, you can see in case of uh, H, H means vegetation, B, it had a 69% accuracy, obviously there was a, uh, the model will get confused with some vegetation and dry vegetation areas, because the dry vegetation will look like vegetation somewhere. So it had a 69% accuracy and the day, best accuracy it got was for it uh, was about 87 percent for no vegetation these were the only three classes in the model that had a higher number of samples the other sa classes had very less samples because of which uh, you can see the performance of the model does not go beyond uh, any respect they're not even close to 50 percent performance but at least for vegetation at least for no vegetation or dry vegetation the model was going to be good We'll try to build this model also in the demo. The next uh, area where we can apply is uh, the bird species detection on the basis of sound samples. Let's let's just think about. Um, I, I want to do something into wildlife preservation. Okay, and, and my task is to uh, is to know that if a particular type of bird is there in my locality or not. Now, one of the ways can be bird watching. Go and sit uh, among those trees for hours and hours with your head up high, here and there, here and there. Right, but we know that even for professional bird watchers, the best way to identify a bird is through the sound. So, if I collect a sound recording of a, of a significant amount of time, maybe in the early, the, uh, early hours of the day, uh, most probably I, I will be able to capture the bird sound. So then I, I process that sound signal and provide this again to my neural network. This should be able to give me, uh, if, if I've trained it well, then this should be able to give me the result that whether that bird was found in that sample or not. This makes my task quite easy. We tried this work personally. Uh, a couple of my students, they tried this work where uh, they uh, got samples from a publicly available data set and they worked on a couple of uh, classes or six seven eight classes they, they tried to incorporate in their uh, work domain uh, they collected those uh, bird samples now both the ways we I, I could have i mean we could have done this work both the ways we could have given uh, we could have converted those sound signals into features directly and then given those features to uh, our neural network but then we try to do something uh, different we uh, we know that the signal can be represented in this form and then we try to capture the signal as an image and we know that cnns are very good with images so with an intuition that a sound simple melt graph of a particular bird will be different from the other one so if i can discern the kind of image from the kind of bird from the sound i should be able to discern it from the image also and uh, surprisingly we got good results so we gave we, we converted this uh, signal into an image so this was uh, the, uh, it was a male uh, spectrogram that we got and that spectrogram was given to a cnn that was doing uh, feature analysis and then uh, it, it was a simple 14 layer network that we, uh, that we built just to give you an idea uh, these eight classes we, we we considered in our work apis apis Chloris chloris, Cocothrostus, Cocothrostus. These are, I think, the uh, the uh, what do you say, scientific names of the bird. The common names are a bit different. Uh, these eight uh, birds we took, and you can see here, this is the kind of uh, male spectrogram that we got. And these inputs we gave to the model, uh, the model that we prepared. So these orangish ones are the convolution layer. The red ones are the pooling layer, max pooling layer. And then we have put in a kind of a dropout layer for regularization after uh, after particular intervals. And then we have a fully connected layer for the classification. Also. These are the results that we got. Uh, and to our surprise, uh, our custom made uh, 14 layer model was giving quite good accuracy. Another parameter LWRP we found out. Connected at the That's a ranking based average position. And that also was, uh, was in our favor. Uh, as when we compared our work to the nearby uh, attempts over this, sorry, sorry, the nearby attempts that uh, yeah, 
good. Okay, sorry for the interruption. So when we compared our work to the other recent uh, attempts on on a similar problem, then we found out that yes, these results were quite, uh, quite sustainable, and this this helped us uh, in in also realizing some of these works are actually, were actually done directly on sound samples. So we were actually getting results probably better than the sound samples. The third application for a greener tomorrow that we can think of is waste segregation. So just on similar lines, we can also train a model. Again, I'm, I'm just visualizing. I have a drone and I can scan through my localities and that scanning can help me know at what, at what point, what kind of waste am, am I able to see uh, in, my, uh, in my scanning purpose. So uh, I just simply take a video, or maybe a three, four, five minutes video will be good enough and then I give it to my model. And that model will tell me the portions of that video where a garbage was seen and even it can discern between the kind of garbage uh, a plastic waste was found or a trash waste was found or a paper waste was found in fact it can go up to the glass uh, the glass waste and other waste these are just a couple of examples that i'm discussing with you uh, the list is endless the list is, out of all those sustainable development goals that i've just discussed with you the list is endless you can pick up any of the goals if you can find a data set if you can if, if you can curate a problem out of it that can have uh, a, a data set for supervised learning or an unsupervised learning scenario, then uh, machine learning or deep learning is there to help you out for that. All you have to do is think about it in a good solution. So ultimately, I need to build my model. So two ways I discussed earlier as well, two ways, either I take the programming way of it or I take the non-programming way of it for a, an easy and a quick solution. Uh, I can take uh, the no-code solutions like Teachable Machine, which is a, uh, a Google uh, product, uh, or we can go for Microsoft Low. Uh, these two easy methods are uh, are the easiest go-to methods, actually, if I want to have a quick solution, right? Uh, if I have my data set and I want to try, uh, obviously, I won't get a custom solution. If I want to build my custom model, I'll have to uh, fall back onto the programming methods. Maybe I, I build my TensorFlow Python uh, code for for uh, model this slide just talks about that yes uh, these uh, uh, people are are using them to to build solutions a mask and no mask detection right? you can see the solution uh, this label is getting changed the moment the lady has a mask on it and this solution has been done in microsoft load so a video was given and continuous monitoring was was being done by by the mo trained model and the moment uh, in the video the lady uh, put a mask on, on them uh, on, on, on her face uh, the model turned into this similarly i can uh, identify the green areas just a classical example of what i have was discussing with you and the moment my video enters into a non uh, vegetation area it talks about like deforestation has been done so uh, a simple Maybe a forest department, yeah, it would be really helpful uh, if they have a drone with them for surveillance, uh, captures the samples, give them to the authorities, and then you can have an easy analysis and realization with a very uh, minimal time uh, be, uh, being invested. Then you can see for wildlife preservation and, and behavior, those things can be applied. Marine life detection. When I found a way or not, so all those things can be done. Time for a quick demo, right? So I think everybody can see my page. Uh, let me start with okay. So I, I'll just it's already seven fifty-seven. Sorry. So I'll just go with Teachable Machines. This is the page Teachable Machine. I'll just share this on the chat window. This page you will see simply say get started three kind of projects can be made an image based project an audio based project or a pose based project i'll select the image based project standard one for waste segregation so my first waste is let's say plastic my second waste uh, let's say is trash third ways is let's say paper okay 
now time to upload so i've defined my classes in my in my model so i'm i'm making a model that can predict it can uh, identify plastic waste trash waste or paper waste i need to give it samples so that it can train itself i already have a data set so garbage collection data set i have uh, this is uh, again it's, it's openly available oh sorry I, i was selecting for plastic waste so yeah it is plastic waste i just randomly select some samples to see how many samples are these about 281 samples here. you can see it has loaded those samples 281 samples now uh, is the turn for trash waste I'll go to my trash class Sorry. garbage collection garbage trash sample sorry small for the mess but 137 samples are there in the data set no problem and then i'll pick up uh, paper waste so i'll pick up uh, about like oh, 153 samples no trying to balance my samples right so in the first one i had about 280 samples the next one i had about 137 obviously trash samples are less so it might not perform that good for trash paper also has something similar okay so plastic sample as you can see has bottles trash sample has miscellaneous things in it uh trash here some brown paper in the lobby is there the next mm -hmm. thing i have to do is just press this training button and you can see the training has started uh it will just wait now you can see the training epochs are happening how many times the data set will be fed okay so i'll have to stop my camera from here so that teachable machine i hope you can still see my teachable machine page right so i'm visible here now i'm visible here yes sir Okay, so let me see if I have something for you. So these are two bottles. Okay. Moment, I bring these bottles. Can you see the plastic label coming up as hundred percent? So as I bring them close to the camera, so the maximum information coming to the camera, not to the camera, is this. So it's able to discern. It's able to discern. Then uh, trash. Trash had some uh, some chips packets also. Look what happens. I did not train on this sample, mind you. I did not train on this sample. It's a random sample. As the maximum information from the sample is this. Classification. Then uh, do I have some paper? Right. So, model can be made. This way is uh, what I'm visualizing here. Well, the problem is not like building this model. Um, the point is, I can extrapolate this knowledge and I can make my model. To do things uh, on similar lines, so you can have, you can imagine uh, a drone. I mean, if I if I'm really planning to deploy, so maybe uh, I am using my camera for this purpose. So I'm just going on in, in, in uh, picturing those streets. Uh, maybe I put this on my dash cam, and I'm just picturing my streets. And the moment it finds some garbage, provided I've trained like that. Now look over here. One thing that we, that we all need to understand: the model learns the way it has been trained. Look at the samples here. If I just zoom in on a sample, it's it's so lab-like environment, right? A, but a pic, I mean, it, it's it's picture perfect for it. One single sample, 
in the entire image a green bottle plastic bottle nothing no noise around it it's almost a real world app image so maybe if i have a drone or or let's say a camera that is uh, surveilling uh, or doing surveillance somewhere so if i have a model trained on this purpose then this can definitely detect it if i try and see if i have something on desert let's see desert should be dry uh, dry grass now why i'm taking samples from here because these are the samples on which the model has not been trained I am getting an image. Let's see if I I can give this the model name. It's trying it. slightly orange. Ah, oh, my God! It predicts. It does. It's dry grass. I've taken a sample from dry grass, and it's predicting as dry grass. Although the the colors coming from my screen are not uh, the one that's coming. That will be coming from the real world. So these these uh, applications can be extended. I mean, I, I can build a model for uh, for that bird thing also, but I think it's already eight eight or eight ten. Uh, I'll try to wrap up my discussion here. This was just to give you an idea, a glimpse about uh, uh, we we can build solutions, and these days quite easily, right? Without much of an effort, it was just clicks away, and uh, I could see something really uh, interesting happening. So. Those, those deep learning solutions are these days few clicks away, provided you know your problem and you have the data with you. Because ultimately, either your problem will be supervised or in your problem will be unsupervised. In both these scenarios, you will be requiring data. If you have the right data with you, if you know your problem well, and you have some sort of a domain knowledge, uh, you will be able to have a quick and uh, a relatively surprising solution for your problem. So, from any of the SDGs that we, we know are there, uh, pick up a problem that is socially uh, exciting, right? And people are looking for solutions in that. And you can you, you can actually uh, start working on that. People are coming up with startups on, on these points. Uh, any, any of a socially relevant problem they're picking up and they are building solutions for that. That's all from my side, as far as uh, the discussion and the demo is concerned. Uh, Within this time frame, I think uh, this is the best I, I, I could cover up. Uh, Danish, over to you if, if there are any questions or queries. And I would share the, the, the resources definitely. I Today, also, I got, a co I, I got a mail or message from somebody from AMU only regarding my earlier uh, uh, talk and presentation. So don't worry. Uh, if you have uh, interest in these kind of activities and you want these resources, I, I will definitely forward you the links also of these resources. Yes, so your session is very informative. And uh, we have a Q&A session. We have to wrap up very quickly. So, participant, do you have any question related to this? So you, so you can ask. So, agar abhi, uh, doubts nahi hai, ya phir, uh, if you're still in the understanding phase, you can post me your doubts or your queries or your uh, concerns uh, on my email address. Uh, Muhammad Amir, I think, has raised his hand. Yes, sir. You can have a quick uh, question. Yes. Good evening, sir. Sir, evening. Uh, as you have already told, that we can use AI uh, to, you know, to protect our environment. But uh, don't you think that uh, there are you know, lots of uh, negative impacts of AI? Of using, of using AI on the environment, like uh, uh, the uh, training an uh, AI model can require uh, significant amounts of uh, computational power, which in turn requires a large amount of energy. And uh, this energy is uh, often generated using fossil fuels, and which leads to you know uh, greenhouse gas emissions and yeah, then you know, uh, global warming and other uh, environmental issues. So, uh, how can you know we mitigate this uh, problem also? Can you shed some light on this also? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, look, 
every i mean every invention of of human uh, will always have a positive as well as a negative impact it starts from a knife and it goes up till ai we can use it for something positive we can use it for something negative the cars that we use these days even though i'm talking about evs they also have their uh, drawbacks they also have their uh, environmental situations but it's actually all about the broader picture right it's it's all about the, if if the advantages way more okay then the disadvantages or or there will be shortcomings there will be issues and there were issues but if i am able to save a life with ai right if i am able to save a marine life if i am able to save a species don't you think it's it's uh, it's on the advantageous side so i have to weigh it's a trade off it's always a trade off in computer science we always talk about trade off between time and space so it's a trade off and if the if the advantage side uh, weighs slightly heavily then we tend to shift our that's the human way of doing things hamare real world ke andar bhi bhai kisi bhi cheez ke har cheez ko dekh lo nuksan bhi hai fayde bhi hai chahe wo uh, hamari day to day activity ko dekh lo khelne ko bhi maa baap kehte hain zyada nahi khelo padhne ko bhi khelo kehte hain zyada nahi padhna chahiye it has to be a balance our our bodies and our everything are are made, are made that way so we have to understand that balance aur agar hamare फायदे जो हैं उसके नुकसान से ज्यादा हैं तो वी टेंड टू सपोर्ट दैट पार्ट ये बात आपकी बिल्कुल सही है कि जो मॉडल्स हैं उनको ट्रेन करने में मेहनत लग रही है बट ये काम तो इंसान के साथ भी है मुझे आपको ट्रेन करने या मतलब आपकी यूनिवर्सिटी को आपको ट्रेन करने के लिए कितनी ज्यादा रिसोर्स लगानी पड़ रही है बताइए काफी ज्यादा राइट बट दैट इज वर्थ इट दैट इज वर्थ इट सस्टेनेबिलिटी के लिए वो इंपॉर्टेंट है so we all are consuming resources but ultimately are we paying it paying them as what we have to so we need to have a positive outlook for it yes we must be aware aapko aapko resources diye ja rahe hain aapki country aapka institution aapko resources de raha hai par sath hi sath wo hidayat bhi hai ki usko aap sahi se istemal kare ye baat ai ke sath bhi hai bhai agar aap के लिए तैयार हो जाते हैं पीपल दीज इज एज आई सेड एंड आई एम रिपीटिंग पीपल दीज इज आर सेविंग लाइफ लाइफ स्टॉक्स देर यूजिंग फॉर अ नंबर ऑफ पॉजिटिव थिंग्स सो फ्रॉड के लिए भी कर रहे हैं भाई यू माइट से फ्रॉड के लिए भी हो रहा है सो पीपल आई आई मीन यू हैव टू वे दम द इम्पैक्ट तो इनको मिटिगेट करने का तरीका भाई यही है कि वन हैज टू बी कॉन्शियस ये हमारे सेल्फ पे ही आ जाएगी बात कि हम इसको किस चीज़ के लिए इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं और वही इसका एक जरिए तो वी हैव टू बी पर्सनली क्वाइट कॉन्शियस अबाउट फॉर व्हाट फैक्टर फॉर व्हाट पर्पस वी आर यूजिंग एआई जहां तक टेक्निकल की बात है uh, आजकल के वक्त में लोग ज़्यादातर अब उन सोल्यूशन की तरफ जाते हैं डीप लेप एक टाइम था जब एक होड़ लगी हुई थी पीपल वो रनिंग आफ्टर वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड वेरी वो इसे very very complex and very deep networks which were very much time consuming and 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 computationally highly intensive but uh ab uske problem kya thi ki sab wo accuracy ke piche bhag rahe the ki accuracy bahut achhi aani chahiye kaise bhi karke accuracy achhi aa jaye but then people slowly and steadily re- started realizing ki model ko bahut high karne se computationally bahut intensive banane se agar main 1% accuracy bhi achieve kar pa raha hu us problem mein तो वो कोई खास नहीं है अभी रिसेंटली हमने दो एक पेपर पे काम किया है जहाँ पर हमने हमने मतलब मैं और मेरी टीम ने कोशिश ये करी कि हम एक लाइट वेट मॉडल प्रपोज कर सकें एक ऐसा मॉडल जो कि कंप्यूटेशनली कम इंटेंसिव हो कंप्यूटेशनली कम इंटेंसिव होगा तो वो रिसोर्सेज कम खाएगा जब क्योंकि मॉडल ट्रेन करने से ज्यादा हमें सोचना पड़ेगा मॉडल जब वो डिप्लॉय होगा वो चलेगा क्या तब भी उसको कंप्यूटेशन इंटेंसिव होना है अगर ऐसी बात है तो ज्यादा खाएगा तो अगर मुझे मॉडल ट्रेन करने में एक वक्त तो चलो ठीक है थोड़ी रिसोर्स लग भी गई लेकिन मेरा मॉडल ऐसा है कि वो ट्रेन होने के बाद जब चलेगा एग्जीक्यूट होगा तो वो कंप्यूटेशनली इंटेंसिव नहीं रहता है तब वो काफी लाइट वेट है तब उस केस में ये एक अच्छा सौदा है और इट्स अ गुड ट्रेड ऑफ एंड आई वुड गो फॉर दिस सॉल्यूशन सो दीस डेज पीपल आर नॉट जस्ट ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड डीप एंड डीप एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स मॉडल्स व्हिच आर कंप्यूटेशनल इंटेंसिव बट पीपल आर एक्चुअली रनिंग फॉर और ट्राइंग फॉर मॉडल्स व्हिच आर लाइट वेट व्हिच आर स्मार्ट इन सम सेंस दैट दे डोंट कंज्यूम अ लॉट ऑफ कंप्यूटेशन घटाओगे तो कंप्यूटेशनल रिसोर्सेज घटेंगी और आपका जो ओवरऑल कार्बन फुटप्रिंट है वो कम होगा तो पीपल आर आर डेफिनेटली गेटिंग सेंसिटिव एंड दे दे आर मिटिगेटिंग दीज थिंग्स 
through these uh, methods or maybe as uh, as a researcher in this area is looking for solutions which are lightweight in nature which are less uh, computationally intensive in nature so time is running so we are going to our next step vote of thanks uh, so our esteemed this speaker and distinguished points as we draw curtains on this enlightening webinar on ai for greener tomorrow it has been a truly remarkable 